there's a couple of things that makes eating meat a suboptimal decision. The torture and killing of innocent beings, the environmental pollution or the bad effects on one's cholesterol, to name a few. And as Abraham Lincoln said, you can fool all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. It will not take long until all people realize that meat itself is not a great product on different levels. And in a capitalistic environment, if your product is not optimal, which meat is, marketing itself won't promote the product forever. The protein marketing lie won't sell products 100 years from now, unless the IQ starts declining, as we've seen in the movie Idiocracy. Brando's got what plants crave. Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's what they used to make Brando. How did the world ever get like this? Which means the livestock companies need to make their product better. And the meat companies do in fact try. From things such as mixing meat with natural antioxidants to finally lab-grown meat. Also known as clean meat. Clean meat is actual muscle tissue grown from animal cells. Although I've been vegan for 3 plus years, I do think that this can be the future. And I'm not the only one. In fact, Bill Gates invests in a company that grows lab meat in 2017. Here's why I think that this has so much potential. Lab meat works by first taking a muscle sample from an animal. Unspecified cells, also called stem cells, get multiplied and specialized into fibers, which then turn into muscle tissue in a petri dish. Sounds complex, but the stem cell mechanism is the same process that happens inside every animal's organism. Now in the lab grown meat, and this is crucial, just outside of the nervous system of the animal, which means this won't create any pain. Not only that, we would also need far less animals to create the amount of meat that supplies the demand nowadays. This means less suffering. Great. Is it better than going vegan? Hell no, but it's a painless, easy and simple start. This is exactly what drives change. An activism attack in a beef restaurant won't make a big difference, but creating a sustainable, future-oriented company which solves a big problem will. But nonetheless, we we'll still face some challenges when doing so. Number one is price in the clean meat. In 2013, the lab-grown burger meat cost more than $300,000. While the expenses since have gone down, they're still far away from being competitive with real meat products. Right now, a quarter pound costs about $600. While this sounds discouraging, we have to understand that if there's demand for a product, there is funding. Just because it isn't cheap nowadays in our technology doesn't mean it isn't cheap 10 years from now. A computer was very expensive 30 years ago for example. While 30 years seem to be a long time, this is the time that we need. 1.3 billion people are employed in the livestock sector at this point. This is a fifth of the entire population. If everyone would stop eating meat tomorrow, we have a public uproar. Like in Idiocracy again. How come nobody's buying Brondo the thirst mutilator? Ah, shit. Half the country works for Brondo. Not anymore! The stock has dropped to zero, and the computer did that auto layoff thing to everybody. We're all unemployed! I think that makes the harmony suck. The time that it takes for the proper technology makes the switch more sustainable. While now we might think, oh, the public will have no interest of this artistic, weird, lab-grown meat, I'll remind you of a Henry Ford quote. Mr. Ford is the founder of the Ford's Motor Company and made cars more affordable. Here's what he said. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. The lab-grown meat is not better than fake meat from plants, but it could be a damn great start. There will be less land needed to produce the same amount, less animal feces will be produced, less climate change, less freaking hormones and antibiotics, less breeding of harmful viruses like the mad cow disease, which could really be a threat to our survival in the future. This could be so great, because especially if the technology of the lab-grown meat is new, it would therefore lead to harder controls from the Food and Drug Administration, which would make the quality of the product even better. Maybe even the taste. Is lab-grown meat better than going vegan? Probably not, but it could be the solution 
to a really big problem and that's why I look forward to it. If you like this video and want to know more about fitness, nutrition, mindset and health and how these things can help you get the most out of your life, subscribe to this channel.